Hey everyone, today I'm going to film a hockey player and interview him as well. I'm going to walk you through the behind the scenes of that shoot. Sit back and enjoy. It's another day out here in Toronto. We're getting ready for a shoot. Got the whole kit packed up in the car and I was too lazy to rig the camera on set. So I went ahead and rigged it up, buckled it just like an amateur. Got the 360 over there, going to shoot some BTS with it. First thing on the clock is we're actually gonna get some drone footage of the exterior. Client didn't even ask for this, but I thought it might be nice since I showed up a little bit early and I thought, why not, right? Get a few parallax shots, some flyaway shots, you know, establishing type shots that you can start and end the video with just to make things a little bit easier for the editor. And then shortly after, we began setting up for the interviews. And this time we're actually filming in a locker room. And unfortunately, we couldn't have any control over the house lights. So I had to keep those lights on and I had to kind of mix in the placement of the key light accordingly so that it looks like the entire lighting is intentional. Um, also, the lights were a little bit weird because there was a mix of tungsten and daylight in them. So I just went ahead and set my key light to daylight. I put the key light really, really close and made it really bright just so that it overpowers the house lights. I'm working with a two camera setup, the FX3 as the A cam and A7 IV as B cam. As you can see here, we didn't have a chair, so we had to use a garbage can to test out the shots. Then we finally found a chair for the subject. I, however, will still be sitting on the garbage can. Here's the A cam, got the 35 mil 1.8 on this. And on the B cam, got the Viltrox 50 millimeter 1.8. And here's what the interview looks like with just a Rec 709 LUT and a few minor exposure and white balance corrections. One thing that I did kind of miss is that on A cam, I put a ProMist filter on and on B cam, I didn't. So you can see there is a very slight glow around the person on the A cam. Whereas when you go right to the B cam, it's much sharper and the light is more contained on the skin tones. And now that I see it, I actually think I prefer the non ProMist version in this case. For the lighting, I used a Amaran 200X as the key light and the Amaran PT2C as the backlight. Once we were done with the interview, now we're ready to shoot a little bit of B-roll. At first I decided to go with the gimbal just to get some smooth shots and cover myself because uh, handheld is a little bit more unpredictable, but with the gimbal, I know I can get certain types of shots that will definitely be usable. So I went ahead and did some of that for about 15 minutes. And uh, then I put the gimbal down and decided to free ball it because Honestly, there's some scenarios where the gimbal is just not fast enough to catch up with whip pans and, and things like that, especially when a hockey player is going around you really fast. Sometimes just going handheld and shooting 4K 120 on the FX3 is all you need. So even if you're not as good at manually focusing, which you probably won't be when you're dealing with speeds of this kind, this is sports, you, you really can't rely on yourself. So the autofocus held up really well, even though I'm on a Sigma lens, it's the 24 to 70, 2.8 and you just shot everything in 4K120 and even the handheld work looked really good. Unless you speed it up to normal speed and then you might want to have to apply some warp stabilization. But for the most part, it's actually really usable. Uh, but usually if I keep these clips real speed, sometimes I like to add a plugin called RSMB or Real Smart Motion Blur, which adds basically fake motion blur based on the motion of the video. The only thing is I use Premiere and that plugin on Premiere slows down the timeline quite a bit, or not the timeline, but that specific clip. The other thing is for the past two years, I've been shooting mostly everything on a black ProMist, but in this area, there's a few shots that my colleague helped me get from outside the rink while I was filming this hockey player. He was using the A7 IV with the 35 millimeter lens and that lens didn't have a ProMist on it. And in those shots, I genuinely liked them more. They had a really crisp, really high quality looking shot. Whereas with the ProMist, even though right now I'm on a Nisi, it's a 1 8th, it still gives you that sort of foggy look almost. And I think it's partly because of the ice, but I don't know, I'm starting to lean more towards the non-promised look more often than not now. And I'm leaning towards 
not putting it on, on by default just because it gives you a quote unquote cinematic look. So yeah, that's been the shoot and that's how I did it. If you have any questions, please drop them below.